In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how you can open the floodgates to more cash in your 20s. To be honest, this doesn't only apply to you if you're in your 20s, this could apply to you if you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, it doesn't matter. If you are a human and this is your intention, these three components that I'm gonna to talk to you about are gonna be the things that's actually gonna help you. And after you do implement these things into your life, it's not gonna be a situation where money just floats from the sky what it does is it puts you in a position to make more money right it's a good foundation for you to build upon but yeah let's get started and if you see me looking down it's because i got notes and i'm reading off my notes and then i'm gonna explain do you know what i mean let's go component number one you need to have your money beliefs shattered right in front of you and what i mean by that is everybody has money beliefs money beliefs that you've learned from school your friends, your colleagues, your peer group, parents, siblings, auntie, uncle, whoever it is, you've got money beliefs, whether you realize it or not. It's probably money beliefs from social media, maybe the things you're watching on TV, maybe the programs that are communicating subconscious messages. Everybody has money beliefs, whether they're positive, negative. Everybody has money beliefs that either serve them or take away from them, right? But in the context of what I'm saying right now, is you might have the money belief that, all right, 5K a month is a lot of money, okay? And let's say you make around 2K to 2.5K after tax. So in your brain, 5K is a lot of money. Not many people make 5K. And you're thinking about all of the things that you need to do in order for you to achieve that 5K every month. Cool. That's the mentality that you've carried throughout the whole of your life. Your friends aren't making 5k a month or your family members are probably making the same amount as you if not less no one around you is doing that okay now in order for you to have your money beliefs shattered in the context of what i'm saying is let's say now you meet someone that's the exact same age as you or even younger than you and they do 20k in a month with less than half of the work that you put in to make the money that you make that's an example of what I mean by having your money beliefs shattered because now it puts everything to do with money and life itself into perspective because you're thinking, hold on a second, I've been making 2.5K every single month. 5K, I couldn't even imagine myself making that. And you're telling me someone the same age as me or younger than me has made 20K by putting in less of the work. Then it makes you rethink everything. You start to think, okay, what am I doing wrong? How did this person do that? Okay, the fact that this person is able to do that, that means it's possible for me to do that. All right, what's different? Um, what's the difference between me and that person that's, able, that's making that money right now? That's what, I, uh, that's what I mean by having your money beliefs shattered right in front of you. You need to see somebody making an incomprehensible amount of money to the point where it makes you think, what the F, right? My money beliefs were shattered July last year when I was hanging around Jazz Rose, his um, academy students, things like that. In my head, obviously I heard of people making 10K a month. Yeah, 20K a month, it was, that, it was a buzz term, things like that. But then when I started seeing people do 80K a month, 90K a month, 100K a month, you hear about people struggling to make 100K in a year. And you're telling me this person that's about three years older than me has done this in a month. That's when my money beliefs started to shatter because at first I had this belief, but now I'm being introduced to somebody else that has a completely different belief. And now the things that they're implementing and the results that they're getting into their life shatters my belief. It's like, whoa, I've been thinking this whole way, this whole time, and you're telling me that this whole thing over here exists. I'm not gonna sit here and say to you that this is the only way for you to start making more money, but it's one of the core cool ways for you to start making more money. The fact that you've been introduced, you've been exposed to something that you're not usually exposed to and now it gets you to think differently and once you start thinking differently you start acting differently and once you start acting differently that's when you start getting different results so what are some tangible steps that you could start to take so that you can put yourself in a position where your current money beliefs are being shattered right in front of you i think the only thing that you can do is actually get out there and meet people go to events go to these spaces find mentors see what they're see the people that they are mentoring you need to get into places where people are actually getting crazy results. Because if you stay in the confinements of what you are used to, i.e. your friends, family, um, things like that, you're not really gonna make a lot of money because let's say for example, you're earning 3K, 3K after tax. Everyone around you is earning 
1.5k a month, let's just say, in your mind, you're making a lot of money. But you think you're making a lot of money until you're introduced to people that's making sometimes 50 times more than you, 100 times more than you, right? So it's literally just exposure. You need to put yourself in a position to be exposed to these things. And if you don't, these are the things that's going to hinder your growth. One of the core experiences for me that shattered, I had a lot of experience that shattered my money beliefs, but one of them were, was when I found out one of my mentors was making 100k a month. I was thinking, what? I'm here trying to do 3k, 5k, 10k. You're telling me you did 100k in a month. They let me know I'm playing the game way too small. And then last year, myself and my good friend Hazefa, we went to a marketing conference called EMC, the Entrepreneurs Marketing Conference. People are talking about a million a month, nine figures a month. I'm thinking, what? I'm playing the game way too small. I'm thinking way too small. These are the things that I need to be exposed to. These are the things that I need to start reprogramming my mind. Do you know what I'm saying? Again, another thing that exposed me to these types of things, another, and again, another scenario or situation that was able to help me shatter my current money beliefs was just having peers and friends that were making stupid amounts of money. Shout out Walid, shout out Kwamo, who else? Denzel. Um, yeah, that's what people that comes to my mind right now. But I have peers that are making money, but you wouldn't think that that kind of money was possible if you weren't exposed to it. That's why exposure is possible, I mean, not possible. That's why exposure is very important. Because if I wasn't exposed to these things, I'll be saying, okay, 10K a month, it's not really possible. It's gonna take me long to do that. 20K, 30K, oh, sounds a bit steep. I'm not really sure if I can do that. Until your friend does 20K a month. Until your friend does 30k a month, until someone that you've tangibly met and spoke to does those numbers, that's when everything changes because you'll look at them and think, okay, they're not much different to me. If they can do it, I can probably do it as well. But none of this even happens if you're not putting yourself in the right places to be exposed to things or people that will shatter your current money beliefs. But yeah, that's enough on this topic. Cool, let's move on to the second one. This one is quite self-explanatory. You hear about it all the time. You've probably been told this, but chances are you haven't actually done it, right? And I don't think this is a thing that you do one time and everything changes forever. I feel like this one thing that I'm gonna tell you is something that happens continuously. And just like Alex Hormozzi says, sometimes you need to be reminded more than you need to be taught. So this next one that I'm gonna to speak to you about is probably gonna be a reminder. But anyway, the second component that I think you need is you have to reprogram your current beliefs about money. So first we spoke about having your current money beliefs shattered right in front of you by seeing somebody else make incomprehensible amounts of money. The second one we're talking about is you have to make the effort to consciously reprogram your mind about money. So how do we do this? First, we do this by identifying what we currently believe about money. Is money bad? Is money evil? Um, does money make someone powerful and is having too much power a bad thing? Does money make someone greedy? Does money make someone selfish? What do you actually believe about money? What are the good things? What are the bad things that you believe? Because these beliefs will shape how you act towards money and it will shape how you act when you are in possession of money. Right. For example, if you have the belief that money is bad and having too much money is bad, subconsciously, whenever you do get a lot of money or you do get some money, you're going to spend it. Because if you believe money is bad, you're not going to want to hoard it. You're not going to want to save it. You're not going to want to do things that's going to create more money because inherently you believe money is bad. And you think that if you have money, you're going to be a bad person. And of course, you don't want to be a bad person. Can you see how these beliefs really shape how you act? Once you are aware of the subconscious thoughts and feelings that you hold towards money, it allows you to say, okay, cool, this is how I currently am. What are the things that are serving me? What are the things that are taking away from me? Okay, once the, this, this stage is more so just the acknowledgement and coming to a place of understanding of where you currently are at on the chessboard, right? That's stage one. Stage two, in reprogramming your mind when it comes to money is you have to be quite similar to um, component one. 
You need to be exposed to different money mindsets. You need to be exposed to how people with money actually think when it comes to money because on the broadest spectrum, poor people think about money completely differently to how wealthy and rich people think about money. Poor people, and I mean, I'm generalizing when I say poor, but poor people tend to think of money as this thing that comes and goes, this thing that I use to survive. Um, if I get lucky, I can spend it on something nice, you know, hopefully. Typically, on a general basis, that's how poor people think of money. But on the other side of the spectrum, when it comes to rich and wealthy people, money is just a tool. Money is just a tool for them to grow their wealth even more. Money is a tool for them to help them look after their family. Money is a tool to help them live in abundance. Money is a tool to help them further expand their business. They understand that money isn't the be all and end all. It's just something that, it's like a it's currency. It flows. But when it comes to poor people, they just hold on to it, right? But that's a neither here or there, that's a whole separate topic. When it comes to reprogramming your mind, you are not going to know how to think until you see someone at a higher level and observe how they think. For example, for me, um, last year, for 2023, I could only see a great money mindset on social media, YouTube, things like that, learning from other people. But it wasn't until I actually met my one of my mentors jazz rose and i saw how he spoke about money how he operated when it came to money that it was only then when i realized okay there's another level that i can get to i always knew there was another level but i can see what that level looks like and i have a step-by-step -step process that i can follow in order for me to actually get there and you have to understand this it takes more effort for you to change than it does for you to stay the same it's going to take more effort for you to reprogram your money mindset than it is for you to keep your mindset the same. Why is this? Because when it comes to changing, it requires conscious effort. When it comes to staying the same, it doesn't require conscious effort. So your autopilot mode, your default setting is how you've always been operating. It's your wallet, you're like that because it doesn't require conscious thought. So in order for you to change, you need to keep on up, um, a acquiring you need to keep on adding the conscious thought to the point where it now becomes a subconscious behavior right so that's when you fully ascend it to a new level and that new level becomes your default when i talk about conscious effort i mean that you need to actually do the things that's required so for example you actually sitting down and reading and studying and um, things that your mentor has told you books youtube videos seeing how other rich people think um, going out and meet and reach rich people, listening to the way they speak, observing the way they think. All of these things require conscious effort. It's things that people know that they should do, but they don't do it. So you actually have to do it because knowing something or knowing to do something and actually doing it is completely not the same. So how did I change my money mindset when it came to, um, yeah, when it, when it came to money, making money and things like that? The first step I ever took was reading Rich Dad Poor Dad. And if you're watching this video, chances are you've probably read Rich Dad Poor Dad before. It was probably one of your first books. And if you haven't read the book, don't know what you're waiting for. Amazon, go get a book, right? Rich Dad Poor Dad creates a clear distinction on of how his rich dad thought and how his poor dad thought. His rich dad representing rich people as a whole and his poor dad representing poor people as a whole. And he created a clear distinction between the two. Another book that I read was Think and Grow Rich. If I had to summarize Think and Grow Rich, it's more so putting your mindset in a state that allows you to think of abundance and position your mind in a way that allows you to create the type of lifestyle that you actually want and desire. The next book I read was Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. Quite similarly to, similarly to Rich Dad Poor Dad, the author, I think T. Harv Eker or Eker, he creates a clear distinction between poor people and rich people. When I say those phrases, I'm generalizing, but he, sh he literally demonstrates to you how a poor person thinks and why this keeps them in the same place. And he demonstrated how a rich person thinks, a millionaire thinks, and why this person is, why this mindset allows them to actually thrive, right? But if I didn't do these things, I wouldn't be aware of what the next level of a money mindset looks like. So yeah, the second step to, or the second component to opening the floodgates to more cash inside of your personal life and business life is reprogramming and constantly analyzing your money mindset, what you believe about money, how you behave when it comes about, when it comes to money and things like that. I remember you probably know this already, but sometimes you need to be reminded more than you need to be taught. Sometimes you need to actually go and do the things that you know, rather than seeking for new information that you're not actually going to act on. 
right now I feel like I'm, I'm talking and stuff so if you're enjoying this and you're finding value subscribe drop a like drop a comment do you know what I mean the usual stuff go do it